Hey guys, Blue Coyote here. It is uh, May 24th, 2020. I'm coming at you with a video. Okay guys, um, I know I haven't made a video here in a few, but um, I didn't want to make a video just to make a video, okay? You guys know I don't like to do that because I'm not here for clicks or views. I don't monetize my channel. Um, I do this to show people observation and hope give a hopefully try to give a better understanding to what we're looking at, okay? Um, so that's why I hadn't made a video in the past couple days. Now, um, I actually made a couple and I didn't post them because I caught myself making a video just to make a video. <laughs> and I was like, nah, I ain't going to do that. You know, I tell people not to do that. I'm not going to do it myself. So um, I've been fighting kidney stones too, and I just I needed to take a break also. So anyway, this is the most recent capture of the Schumann. And, you know, this is pretty mundane. It's pretty normal looking. Nothing really much going on here. All right. Or is there? Okay, you'll know here in a second, okay? Now, this is why right here I was going to make a video yesterday and the day before. I actually made them. I just didn't post them. Um, but we're, this, what we're looking at here is from the 21st. And anybody that knows anything about this tool or has been watching this for a while knows that the, to make a shape like that, a sphere, two of them, by the way, is completely crazy. I have no idea how this happens, what caused this, or anything. I have no clue when it comes to that, on this part of it. All I can tell you is this, I just don't, so many things had to come together at the same time to make that, to make this tool come up with a, a spherical shape like that in such a precise way. I mean, we can zoom in, guys. I mean, look at that. that that's pretty, pretty, you know, symmetrically spherical. I mean... <laughs> I don't know what else to say, um, but, you know, I'm going to make a playlist, guys, and I've been talking about that for a minute, and I am. I've already actually started making them. I just haven't posted them yet. It's basic terminology about what we use here on my channel and others, such as CMEs, solar flares. They're going to be one to two minute, maybe three minute videos, just so people have an understanding of what those words mean. Um, Schumann resonance will be one of them, Okay. Because I can't keep explaining it every video. If I do, it's just going to get boring for a lot of people. It's going to make the videos longer. And, you know, it just it's really not doing anybody any good except for the brand new people. Which is why I would do the playlist. So they can have a better understanding. Um, so with that being said, the data points on these get plotted vertically. Okay? Not only do they get plotted vertically, but this is an average of multiple locations that report in okay and they take an average of all those numbers and that's the point that you see there so all that stuff has to come together at once to see what we're looking at here so the time frame from here to here is about two to three maybe four hours okay so in order for us to get a spherical shape like that you have to have multiple data points at multiple different times at the exact shape to make that <laughs> okay hopefully you guys understood what I just said there so each time a data points plotted it plots it vertically so it had to pick that up in a, in a way multiple times from multiple different locations with an average to make a sphere somebody tell me how that's a coincidence that ain't no coincidence, guys. No way. I don't believe in coincidences anyway. Um, I think everything happens for a reason. It's just my, you know, my belief. But, you know, what could cause something like that? Now, remember, the, the human resonance is me measured from the surface of the Earth to, you know, what's bouncing around inside our, eye, uh, our ionosphere. Okay? Um, so, that's where the frequency is being picked up. And I am no way, shape, or form saying that there's some big something or another inside our ionosphere, you know, causing that. Because that's not what, really what we're looking at. We're not looking at an object, okay? We're looking at vibrational frequency. So this is not a object, is what I'm trying to say. Something has produced a signature in such a way that this is what it looks like on this tool, Okay? Now, again, I have to say that I don't think that's a coincidence. I think I don't think that this is a natural occurrence either. I think this is being done intelligently by something or someone. All right? Um, that's just my belief. Again, 
everybody's welcome to their own, and, and, and I would entertain and I would listen to people with other, other things, right? Um, yeah, Scott must be posting the video right now. <laughs> anyway, um, ignore that, guys. Sorry about that. But you can see that, right, guys? I mean, doesn't that just blow your mind? Anybody that's ever been looking at this tool for any length of time and know exactly what this is um, and see something like that, it just has got to blow your mind. Uh, it did mine. Now, anybody knows, has any idea on what that, what could actually cause something like that, please let me know. Um, this is racking my brain. I've been, this has been hitting me since the 21st, and today's the 24th. So we're looking at, you know, three days I've been thinking about this, and I can't come up with nothing. Um, so, you know, anybody has any idea on what that is? Now, something else I want to say here, too. I'm not so sure this is the first time we've seen this. And when I say that, I think that this has been here the whole time. We just didn't see it. So let's go to the most recent capture, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Let me zoom in. And if you guys look close, okay, it's there. It's just behind something. Scott's doing another one. <laughs> anyway, he's probably posting it to both his channels. That's kind of funny. Anyway, but you can see that, right? Um, I guess I could zoom in even further. Well, as far as I can zoom in. But then if we go down and look here, look. Unless we've seen that on the one I just showed you, none of us would have picked that up. So what's going on here? And even maybe even right here. You might even have a smaller one right there. And it's all on that 7.83 hertz line. Okay? Now the first one I showed you guys, you know, you jump down about 4 hertz levels. Let's go to that one. Okay, and that's what you get. So you, it showed up on both there. This line here is the 7.83 hertz line. Okay, that's our normal whatever. But then it did that, and then again, this is the most recent. And I think it's been here the whole time, guys. It's just we just didn't see it. At least as of recent, it could have started, you know, whenever it started, but. I think it's been here more than just what I'm showing you, is what I'm trying to say. So whatever's causing that has been here for a minute. And I don't know what that is. Again, if anybody has any idea what that is, please let me know. But um, yeah, I'm going to move on because there's really not a whole lot else to talk about here other than the normal stuff we do. Um, if you guys are feeling kind of strange or whatever when we see these spikes... Um, that most definitely could be part of it, ringing in your ears and all that. But look for a playlist, guys, because I'm going to come out with those so people have a better understanding of what we're actually looking at. Okay, guys, I got you over here at uh, Seeds. And um, I guarantee you this right here is probably what Scott's posting right now. <laughs> He's probably seen the same thing I did. And he probably ran it through his uh, uh, footage or his uh, software because... Um, this CME that's happening here on the left side most definitely looks like it lit up something. Um, and it looks like a, almost like a, what I call, well, I guess we could call it a double CME or a, an extended multi-ejection CME, okay? Because that's what it looks like. If we zoom in here, we're going to see, you know, the initial CME right there. And then you see a second one kind of happen right there, and then that follows. That most, if I was to slow this down, um, if we look at that really close, like right in here, um, you're probably going to see an object there. Um, that's just what I'm guessing. Um, I had, like I said, I haven't ran it through any filters or anything, but it most certainly does look like there's something there. Um, and I would probably bet that that's what Scott's video is probably about there. I don't, I, I don't know for sure yet. Um, I have to go over and look at it. I haven't talked to him today, so um, yeah, that's what's. You know, I'm sure we would probably already be talking about this if it, uh, if I had seen it already before this. Um, but anyway, um, that's, that's happening there. Now, is that coming at us? Um, I don't think it is, and let me show you why. Okay, um, this is over at Seeds, remember guys? There's Lasco C2. And let me show you guys something here real quick. You know, here's the Earth, right? Lasco, it shows you where Lasco is right there, Okay. Let me, uh, I'll zoom in a little bit. Boy, it's just a little graphic that they put at the header of their thing, right? And that's where SOHO is. So, SOHO is the satellite that holds the Lasco C2 camera. 
Okay, so that's the point of view we're looking at, right? So you guys understand perspective there. Now this here is saying that, and this is kind of reverse, um, because they, they must be taking it from either the uh, thinking from underneath or on top, whichever one. This says stereo A is over here, but when we're when we're looking at it on the on the captures, we see stereo A is actually over here. Okay, these are kind of flip flops. So what I'm saying is, is they're probably looking at this from the bottom up instead of the top down. Um, that's kind of what I'm thinking there with this graphic. But this does give you a good idea of what what we're looking at. Sun's here, the Earth's here, the satellite I just showed you is right there. That's the perspective. The one I'm getting ready to show you is over here. Okay. And it's looking at the sun there. That's how we tell direction. Okay. Now you have to combine both uh, views. So here's the 23rd on stereo A from you know basically the side view of what we're looking at. Okay. Now I noticed this last night and I seen a little bit of something because I actually even included it in my video that I didn't post. But you can see if you look, watch watch what happens right here. See that getting brighter and it actually kind of grows right at the end. Okay. Um, something else I've seen, um, and I don't think that this had anything to do with the CME. At least I don't think so. I can't say for sure, obviously. But I'm going to say it didn't. And right there. You, you believe I stopped that right on the right one? <laughs> That's crazy. Okay. This right here, it just shot in front of the satellite. I don't know what that is. It's probably some sort of a meteorite. Um, we don't even know the size of it because we don't know how far it is away from the satellite. If this is way out close to the sun, that's a big object. If it's closer to the satellite, it's not that big. So, um, with that being said, do I think this had anything at all to do with this CME? No, I do not. So, but I did want to show that to you. I actually included that in my video uh, last night that I didn't post. But, um, so as you can see, it started getting brighter and all that. And, um, so I knew something was happening. Okay, not to mention that if you guys look over here... If you look real close, and this is why we don't use this one so much, because it's so hard to see stuff, because it's so, so highly pixelated. Um, you can kind of see a little bit of a foggy color kind of go out that direction. It looked like we might have had a, a small CME or something that popped off the front of the sun that might be coming at us. Um, if, it does, if it is, you can even kind of see it over here a little bit. It's really hard to see, guys. So if you can't see it, I, I get it. Um... If it is coming at us, it's not going to be that big of a deal. Okay, we may not even know that we may not even see it even hit our magnetosphere. We'll probably just thin that one off really, really easy. Um, but who knows? You just you never know. Um, I definitely wouldn't hang my hat on something getting ready to happen because that's definitely something that's not that big of a deal. So, but we'll go the next day so we can see the actual CME that we were just showing you, and obviously you can see that right. Um, most definitely, and this is, this is something that I've seen quite a few times, and that is the fact that, yes, this is blowing off over here, but right after that, you actually see a little bit more activity going off the other side. Okay, I've been, I've been observing that for a long time now. Um, I'm not sure if there's any science behind that, why that happens. Um, I'm sure there is, I just don't know what the correct science is behind it, so I don't you know, pretend to even try to tell somebody it's something. Um, but you can see right there at the end of that capture on this side, you'll see that it is most definitely doing something. Um, it's not big right there. We'll have to wait on more data to come in, okay? And again, exercise patience. But you guys can see that right there. I mean, obviously, that's, that's an ejection of some sort, right? Um, it's a CME. It's not a flare. A flare wouldn't look like that. Uh, flare number one moves it moves basically at the speed of light so it gets here in like eight minutes so <laughs> um, Again, you can see even on this one. It's showing almost like a double Okay, because if you watch it the leading edge there watch right there and then the second one comes right there so Right there second one so you know, this kind of looked like something like that. Um, the, these tools don't aren't really that precise. They try to be, but they're not. Um, it, this, so what I'm saying is this does not look like it's coming at us, okay, at all. Um, the Earth is over here. The satellite's here. Okay, so it's actually going to the left of Stereo A, which means that it's 
completely opposite of us. Basically, this one really did kind of fire off the back side of the sun. And let me show you this because it's a good chance to show you guys how we can tell that that's actually doing that. So this is Stereo A, okay, and it's blowing off to the left. Now when we go back over here to Seeds, or back over here to uh, Lasco C2, it's still going to look like it's going to the left. This is a good chance to show you guys what we mean by perspective, okay? Because the Earth in this picture, in this capture, is here, just like where Stereo A was. But that looks like it's going to the left, doesn't it? Well, it's actually angling back like this, but it looks like it's going to the left. And that's why we show you both, and that's how we determine, you know, direction on what's going on. So this is most definitely firing off the back back direction, okay? It's going that way. Um, it's not going straight to the left, which is why both satellites look like they were shooting to the left. Um, and the more I look at this, um, the more I see an object up in there. Um, look right in there, right about there. Let's pause it. Let's let that run through. We'll pause it. We'll zoom in there for a second. See if we can't. I'm not going to put no filters or nothing on it right now, but um, we will uh, take a look at it. Let's zoom in. Yeah, it most definitely looks like there might be something there. Let's back that up a couple frames. Look at that. Yeah, I would say Scott probably caught something there. <laughs> um, that most definitely looks, uh, yeah. Anyway, that's what's happening with that, guys. All right, guys, um, I do want to take the time here to give uh, Mr. MBB3 a shout-out because um, whether he realizes it or not, he has is, he is, uh, influenced all of us in a good way for a very long time. Um, you know, and I said this before, if it wasn't for him, I probably wouldn't even be doing this. Um, you know, that's really how I found everything, uh, by watching his UV uh, updates during the summer. He's got a network of people that send him in readings, and um, he, you know, he posts it on his channel and stuff, and he takes readings himself. Now, he takes readings of UVA, B, and C. Now, we have to keep in mind that uh, UVC should not be getting to the surface of the Earth, ever, unless it's from an artificial source here where we're at, like welding machines and, and probably like tanning beds and stuff like that. Um, but what I'm saying is that our atmosphere was long since thought to have blocked all of UVC from getting to the surface. Well, it's not now, okay? Um, and he's proven that. So if you guys go over here to his webpage, which is where I'm at right here, and you go down to new UV readings, you just click on that little tab, and obviously right here, it'll take you to it. Now, it says click here for a video. He does these updated videos. Um, and as it gets more into the summer, I think he does more because it becomes more relevant during the summer. So, UV, A, B, and C. Now, I'm not going to show the video because that's it's his. I want you guys to go watch it over there, okay? I know he probably wouldn't have a problem with me showing a small clip of it, um, but I'm not going to. Um, you know, he deserves that traffic. So, um, anyway, go over and check this out because he'll show you UV, A, B, and C. He's got, you know, he's got the instruments and, and multiple people in his, his network have them, and they send him in, you know, videos of them you know, they video the actual instrument itself as they're holding the wand. If you look here, um, you know, th this is his hand, by the way. He's got a glove on, and he's holding an instrument, okay? And then he's holding it up to the sun is what he's doing, and it's taking the UV readings. So um, go check this out because this is, this is very important stuff because, number one, you can keep from getting, you know, you know what the UV A and B is, what we typically think about, right? That's the stuff that sunscreen can block. UVC cannot be blocked by any sunscreen. Okay, the only thing you can do for that is to cover your skin. Or to use some kind of shade device like an umbrella. Um, so remember that UVC gets you at a molecular level. It goes right down, man. It's bad stuff. Now our skin does, you know, it does an okay job, but it's not. Guys, it's really dangerous stuff is what I'm trying to say. And the fact that it's now getting to the surface through our atmosphere. And if you guys go look at any information on UVC, almost everything you see is going to tell you that it's not possible. You know, they're going to tell you that you're not going to see UVC on the surface because our atmosphere blocks it all. So the higher altitude you're also, like if you're in a plane or maybe you live in the Rockies or something, 
you're the higher the altitude the, the more intense it is also obviously because you're closer to the source of the uv <laughs> i mean that's pretty much what that boils down to um you know yes they've always said that some uvc gets through but it doesn't make it, it isn't strong enough to make it to the surface now it is so you know an ozone is what blocks it usually um if i'm correct on that i believe i'm correct on that um but you know we all we've been talking about ozone holes and stuff like that ever since i've been alive um so whether that's coming into play or whatever but all i can say is that uvc is now on the surface so and guys go over and check this out because you can look at this on the daily and check it out he gives the updates it's good stuff um help protect your kids you know you can know the uv levels and stuff um it's, it's just a really good data collection that he's been doing for years and it's professional it's on point information is correct so guys go check it out i just wanted to throw this one in here real quick this is just a, a very simple graph of a chart showing you what levels are for uv and what they can do um, obviously zero to two there's no danger to the average person um, three to five little risk of harm for unprotected sun sun exposure uv index of the six to seven High risk of harm from uh, unprotected sun exposure. In other words, anything exposed on your body could get sunburnt in 30 minutes, it says. Um, off to the right there. 8 to 10, which is you, we, we end up being there quite often during the summer, just so people know. Uh, very high risk of harm from unprotected sun exposure. In 20 minutes, you can burn. Um, it tells you what to do in, in those cases. Then 11, 11 and above. Uh, you, guys, that's another thing. It used to be unheard of to see a UV index of 11 to 12. That was like, that would drop people's jaw like crazy. Dude, we've seen them, he's shown them last year and the year before that I've seen, they're like 15. UV index was like, they had to raise the UV index number because they were getting such high readings. <laughs> I mean, that right there should tell you guys that something's changing globally. This is something that is not regional or local this is global stuff guys something's happening from outside of our planet and if people can't see that i really feel sorry for them because something's going on anyway 11 or plus um extreme risk of harm you can burn in less than 15 minutes i mean you outside in a, in a uv index like that and you don't have something protecting your skin I mean, you're just asking for it and let's just go down the road of this real quick too listen if you guys continue to do that, like when I was a kid, um, you know, obviously the knowledge wasn't as good. And it was nothing for me to get sunburnt two or three times a week. And, you know, I may suffer from that later on in my life. I mean, it could actually cause, you know, cancers and stuff like that, damaged skin. So, um, this is why this is important. And UVC is even worse, guys. Okay? Um, yeah, there is no sunscreens out there, but there's things that we can do. We can be aware, and we can, you know, do what we need to do. So, yeah. Shout out to Mr. MBB3 again. I'll leave a link. <laughs> okay, guys, I got you over here at SDO real quick. Um, this does show that CME, um, and I'm going to show it to you real quick. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run down, I'm going to uh, put together a little uh, update on these tools here at the end of my video. And I, I got a song I want you guys to listen to, because I think it really um, kind of hits on a lot of people right now. Um, you know, with all the tragedy we've been having lately, um, with all the stuff globally, you know, Scott, and his, you know, his uh, ex-wife had, uh, you know, committed suicide. And, and let me tell you guys something. I've been there myself. Um, very, very depressed at certain times, and I had to fight it myself. Um, don't be afraid to reach out. And I'm going to leave a couple of uh, websites and stuff and numbers that, you know, don't be afraid. What, what's it going to hurt? You're, if you're to that point, it's not going to hurt to make a phone call. Okay, it's very important. It really is, guys. Um, but this song, it's, it's called Lifeline. And um, I think I might have played it once before. But it really kind of hits on stuff that is, you know, sometimes we all feel that way. And it's okay not to be okay or to feel okay. If you can wrap your head around that, um, you're already ahead of the game. You know, it's okay not to be okay. And there's people out there, and I have to say that, my subs, Scott subs, and multiple other uh, people. I mean, what what happened here in the past few weeks with the help that you gave him and, and through you know 
any any way that you could, even if it was just prayers. Um, it, it just proves to me that there are more good people than bad. And it also proves that we got the best subs around. <laughs> I mean, my gosh. It, it was it was overwhelming at some points. It really was. And um, I'm, I'm proud. I'm proud to call you guys my subscribers. And I know Scott is too. And, and you know, multiple others also. But for, at least for us, I, I can tell you right now that that was, yeah, very humbling. Um, but the more important thing, what I'm saying here is that don't let your, don't, don't think that you, that there's not people out there that you can talk to. Um, if you're that low, you know, de depressed, if you're getting to that point, don't let it go too far because bad things will happen, guys. And, and at the end of that, that, that end, that end, end game is what I'll call it. Um, it's never worth it. It's just not. Okay. Um, so, you know, even if you have to reach out to me, I got emails, they're all over the place. Okay. They're on my videos. Um, you know, reach out to me if you have to. Um, I'll talk. I, I mean, honestly, I will. Um, I've been through a lot of stuff in my life, and I have a lot of uh, a lot of stuff I can share and help people with on that end of it. But if you don't, obviously, if you want professional help, I'm gonna leave a, a website and stuff here. Suicide hotline, guys. Don't let you know if you're feeling that bad. Please, please, I can't say it enough. Just at least talk to somebody, and you know if you're serious. Okay. Look inside. Because you will. You'll know if you're serious about doing something like that or not. You know, a lot of people do it for attention or what have you, but you know in your own mind whether or not you're serious. And if you are, please reach out. So, um, here's that CME right here, okay? Um, again, it's going to be really fast. Watch. First one. Second one. See it? Okay, remember I was telling you there was two of them? This is the first time I'm actually looking at that part of it, but um, there's the first one. And the reason why it doesn't look like it goes on out, okay, because the, the capture doesn't, the camera don't pick up in like that. That it, The way that the, the field of view ends on here is like this. Okay, so it looks like it hits something and stops, right? Well, that's not what it's doing. What it's doing is, it's, it's be, reason why it looks like it's stopping right there, it's because it's actually firing towards the back side. Again, it's perspective. Okay? Um, that's why it looks like that. That second one, man, that sucker was moving good. <laughs> that, I, I, that might even have been a flare. I don't know. But it definitely was it was rocking on out there pretty good. I mean, just intense. Bam! There it went. It almost looks more like a flare now that I look at that even more. The first one look, is definitely a CME. You can see how slow it's moving. The flares, when we see flares and stuff on here, if we were like dead on where we could see it, like in our view here, um, it probably would have looked like a flare. It probably would have took that X shape like they do on this uh, capture. But um, also this one here, that's starting to die off. Um, it never did make it to sunspot status, but it was spitting and sputtering. So it raised our solar our solar flux up too. Um, but anyway, um, just... Check out this video here. Um, I'll put I'll put together something here a little bit with some updated tools on this and um, that song. And um, yeah, check it out. God bless. Yeshua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool Aid. Okay, guys, one more thing before I get out of here. Um, I did want to read this to you because this is something that I've lived my life by for my gosh years. I don't know who said this first, but it's for me it's pretty profound. And I hope you guys get something out of it because I really, really, truly do believe what this says. You know, it says goodbyes are only for those who see with their eyes. For those who love with their heart, there is no goodbyes. Basically, what that means is anybody that you've lost isn't gone. Okay, what that means is those people are still with you in your heart. So you don't have to say goodbye. Because you can still access what they did for you just by looking inward and who they are. You won't forget them. You don't say goodbye. You might say see you later, but you ain't saying goodbye. Because we're, you know, anybody that's ever touched your life in any certain way at all will always be there. So lose that veil of trying to look through your eyeballs. Look at the world through your heart. 
Because let me tell you something. Most of the time, that heart's smarter than your brain. Trust it. Anyway, guys, have a good one.